Hello, I'm Heather Kahn. Our topic right now, heart disease, and some surprising new research about what might cause it. Joining me is Dr. Murray Middleman, and you are the Director of Cardiovascular Epidemiology Research at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center's Cardiovascular Institute. So good to have you with us. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, your research focuses on epidemiological factors. What does that mean exactly? Well, we study uh, environmental and behavioral psychological factors that might influence the risk of developing diseases and also how these sorts of factors might influence the long-term outcomes and prognosis for patients with disease. I want to talk about the study that you've just published showing that a person's risk of suffering a heart attack is 21 times greater than average within a day of losing a loved one. In other words, a broken, sad heart can lead to literally a broken heart. How did you conduct this study? Well, in this study, we uh, interviewed patients who had survived heart attacks um, at uh, about 30, over 30 medical centers across the country and asked them about events that occurred in their life in the days, weeks, and months before their heart attack. And what we found was that the uh, report of having someone close to them die in the day or week before their heart attack was much higher than we would expect based on the frequency with which this occurred in those same individuals over the prior period in their life. It's really fascinating. Why do we think this broken heart syndrome occurs? Well, when you hear this, uh, the news of someone close to you dying, the grief response can be very dramatic. Uh, that can be accompanied by feelings of anxiety and anger and stress in general, which can cause a change in the stress hormones uh, that are otherwise related to the what, what's sometimes called the fight or flight response. This can then lead to changes in blood pressure going very high, blood vessels constricting, and also it can make the uh, blood more sticky and more likely to form a clot in response to this stress. Taken together, these factors can trigger the onset of a heart attack in an individual who is otherwise has some higher baseline risk. Knowing what you now know, what would you recommend to families whose loved ones have just experienced a tremendous episode of grief? How might we prevent this? Well, there are really two aspects here. One is um, for family and friends to be sure that the individual is well taken care of in terms of their psychological needs and also their physical needs. A lot of times in the stress related to losing someone, an individual stops taking care of themselves. They may stop taking their medications or otherwise just not uh, engage in healthful behaviors. And loved ones and family and friends can help to make sure that they are taken care of. The second issue is that if someone who has recently lost uh, a loved one does experience any symptoms of, uh, that, that are suspicious, shortness of breath or chest pain or uh, palpitations, things that one would worry about may be related to a heart attack, we should assume that it might be and seek medical attention rather than assuming it's just a stress response and that it will pass. We've all heard stories of you know, our grandparents, perhaps, where, oh, she lost her husband and then she wanted to be with him and just weeks later she passed away. And it sounds like you're, you're, you're uncovering some evidence that there's some truth to this. In, indeed. It does seem to be that there's uh, this very striking relationship and that it's most intense in the immediate period, but probably persists for months and possibly uh, even out uh, a year or longer beyond the, uh, the event. Another important paper that's come out discovers a link between pollution and heart disease. Tell me about that. Well, in this, uh, in this study, we looked at the relationship between daily fluctuations in air pollution in the greater Boston area and the incidence of strokes. And what we saw was that um, on days where the air pollution is higher, uh, a high, we saw a higher risk of uh, stroke developing in people living in the greater Boston area. One of the important findings in this paper was that um, in the entire period we were observing uh, the incidence of stroke, the air quality in the Boston area was within current EPA standards. Uh, this implies that even within the current guidelines, uh, there can be a higher risk of cardiovascular events related to poor air quality, even when it's not terribly bad out. Are you concerned that the EPA's current guidelines just don't do enough to protect the public? Well, these results, taken in the context of several other studies, would suggest that the current air quality standard, while better than it was in the past, is still not adequate to fully protect uh, the public's health against adverse cardiac events and, and uh, as well as stroke. Finally, for many of us who are prone to anxiety already, this just adds another layer. So what do you say to people who are now worried about the air they breathe? 
Um, well, I think that for individuals, the important thing is that although we do see this relative increase in the risk of stroke, um, the best thing an individual can do is keep their overall risk low and lowering the baseline risk by having a sensible diet, not smoking, exercising regularly, and if uh, they have any conditions like high cholesterol or high blood pressure, getting those treated adequately to keep their risk as low as possible at all times. And that will also at least partially prevent the adverse effects of poor air quality. In terms of, uh, what, that's what an individual can do. There's a question about whether or not there should be um, changes in the regulations, but that's not something that an individual can really take responsibility for. Right. Control what we can control. Absolutely. Very interesting research that will hopefully lead to some positive changes. Dr. Mari Middleman, Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center, so good to have you here with me. It's been a pleasure to be here.